Why'd I cut a perfectly good Gen 2 GT55 33R bearing housing in half? Well, I'm going to show you. All right, back in the clean room for another episode of Turbo Tech Thursday. Um, yeah, I cut a bearing housing in half. This is the cross section of a Garrett GT5533R. Our GT47, any R series new generation Garrett turbo ball bearing. Why did I cut this in half? Well, I've had a lot of y'all guys ask me lately, Reed. I see people taking their turbo and angling it up against the firewall of the car or turning it at ridiculous angles underneath the hood to uh, facilitate the installation. What, what happens to a turbo when you do that? Well, to talk about that, first you have to understand that a turbocharger in its design that we all know and love today does not have a positive oil seal in it. Piston rings. Turbine shaft. Grooves on said turbine shaft. These piston rings fit into those two grooves. They then snap into the bearing housing into the exhaust seal bore. This area here that I cut right through. It's gonna get a little tricky to see in this because of the way I cut it, but um, this is your oil, your oil inlet. That's your oil feed hole right there. It goes in to this passage here and then oils both bearings. As it, as it travels through the bearing pack, it's going to be kind of hard to see here, but hopefully this will make sense to y'all guys. I apologize doing this on the fly, but you know what? That's just what I'm going to do today. All right. So if you can imagine, your turbine shaft sits in there like this. It's supported, obviously, by the bearing structure. And the bearing structure gets oil, obviously. What we have going on with this is the oil that passes by the journal bearing is then introduced into this cavity here. Let's see if I can point it out. This cavity here is where the oil is flung off of the bearing structure into the drain area. So I've got this one's actually upside down. The feed's here. Oil comes in through the bearing, flung off. This is your drain passage. All right, so this area right here is your drain. What happens when you start... Okay, so I'll back up a little bit. So this is how it's oriented on the car. Straight up is 12 o'clock. That's your feed. So this is your drain passage. As you start tilting the turbocharger, the right side will be the front of the car. You see a lot of the guys, especially like Pro Mod stuff, they'll tilt them backwards and tilt them back and tilt them back. All right, everything's fine and dandy until you get to a certain point to where oil cannot drain out of this cavity right here. All right. In a race application, that's not a huge deal because you're not going to run this thing long enough to get carbon build up to the point of it filling up this area with hard carbon. Start turning it further and further. What you'll see is that you're never going to get it to drain unless you pull some type of uh, uh, miracle and, and have a... Uh, have a tube from your drain line sticking up into the bearing housing cavity to siphon it out from here. You know, you can you can pull all you want to on your drain flange, but because of the inherent design of, of the seal structure and everything else, it's going to pull air through the seal 
and it's not going to pull liquid out of out of a low-lying area so if your turbo is tilted off axis to the point of where this area here is low you will always have oil collecting there which not really a big deal in most cases where it becomes a big deal is if is if it's tilted far enough to where oil can actually puddle up and and not get away from the rear exhaust seal this is a turbo that's uh believe it or not there's an exhaust seal in and all that carbon that little piston ring is in there this turbo was suffering from high crankcase pressure, so it wasn't draining very well. The, the, the turbo was smoking. This, this wheel has got an oil film on it. And, uh, but what has happened is that rear exhaust seal has now been overrun with oil and not allowed to drain because of crankcase pressure. So if your turbo is tilted to the point of where oil will collect around this exhaust seal, mind you, in a properly running turbo when this shaft is spinning this is really scientific read but you know I feel it important to uh, to discuss this particular Garrett shaft has a rear exhaust seal front exhaust seal and then you're gonna see this little feature right here that is an oil flinger, okay? So when the turbo is spinning, your two seals are in the seal bore, but this oil flinger, you see it's in that oil cavity. So the turbo is sitting there running, it is flinging excess oil away from your exhaust seal. Remember guys, your exhaust seal is not designed to run in oil. It's designed to keep the exhaust gas from getting back into the bearing cartridge and creating uh, exhaust dilution into the bearing structure. Um, we'll kind of just say that the Garrett is probably one of the better designs because it has twin exhaust seals. Um, I'd have to pull apart a current Precision to see, but the, uh, the, the billet aluminum Precision Pro Mods that have been out there, they have one seal. The Gen 1 Garrett uh, ball bearing stuff has a single seal. All the journal bearing Garrett stuff has single seal. So what'll happen is over time, if, if that oil flinger can't do its job and the oil cannot be drained away from that seal, then you're gonna eventually carbon up the rear exhaust seal and from that that carbon becomes an insulator which holds all the heat in it which then causes the seal to lose its spring tension they're under a pretty good bit of tension you know they're a, they're a real high high quality alloy to deal with the temperature so the seal will collapse and then at that point you'll start letting exhaust in when you let exhaust in it gets even more heat around the seal structure and Eventually, you will just carbon this whole piece up to where it'll become hard to turn, creating friction, um, and ultimately the turbo is going to start passing some oil by it. Reed, can I mount my turbo straight up and down? Um, yeah, you can mount it straight up and down, especially a ball bearing turbo. And because of the Garrett design with a dual seal, you'll probably get very little oil coming out of it. But you mount it straight up and down. Pulling oil out of here is going to be pretty much impossible. So when the car is shut off, even if you've got a scavenge pump, vacuum pump, whatever, this area here is still going to be full of oil. And it's going to flood that seal area. And it may only smoke a little bit from time to time. You know, maybe worse when you first start the car up uh you know originally but it's going to slowly stop but the reason it's going to stop is because it's eventually going to start carbonating that seal up and it'll create its own its own gasket so to speak uh so how far is too far so i did a little measuring with this garrett and i came up with about 13 and a half degrees 14 gets to the point of where in a drag race application with the g-forces of the car moving forward and some other things you're gonna you're gonna have a hard time keeping oil away from that seal 
Reed, I don't have a Gen 2 Garrett. I've got a, you know, S400 or a journal bearing turbo with a, with a, a different type of seal structure. I cut the same thing open on an S400, S300, T4 Garrett stuff, but the the numbers come up between 7 to 13 degrees. Obviously, y'all guys can, can do what you want to and rotate it further back, but the consequences of doing it in the long term could get expensive. Uh, you know, carbon buildup around the turbine seal ring usually is not a big deal. But if left unchecked, what it'll do is that carbon is an abrasive, and it will sit there and it will wear at that seal ring groove. That seal ring, side clearance, we look for roughly one and a half thousandths clearance total. So just under seven and a half tenths on each side. Uh, any more than that, it'll let exhaust gas by um, or it'll let oil by. And as that carbon builds up in there, you are creating an abrasive and you will wear a step groove in that shaft. What do you take away from this? Uh, it is always best to try to mount the turbo with as close to the center axis of the shaft being parallel with the ground as absolutely possible. Um, that's going to give you the best life. That's going to give you uh, optimal seal performance, optimal bearing performance. And in the long run, your turbo will thank you. You need to tilt it. Like I say, just keep in mind what's going on inside of there when you do that. Well, I hope my little quickie video has been good. <laughs> I hope y'all guys are having a good week. And uh, don't forget, drop me some lines. Tell me, uh, tell me what you want to see some more of, and I will cut more perfectly good bearing housings open. <laughs> y'all have a great weekend.